have the opportunity to speak to you about some of the things that senior pastors expect from children's pastors. After all, if you're a children's pastor, you're not a mind reader. So I wanna share with you my top five things and expectations for children's pastors. Let's jump right into it. And the first thing that senior pastors expect from children's ministry leaders and children's pastors is an understanding of the overall vision of that senior pastor and church. I would say most every pastor has a vision of what they wanna see accomplished in their church. Generally, this vision covers the overall vision of ministry in the local church. A critical component of the expectations senior pastors have for children's pastors and actually all ministry pastors is an understanding of their vision for the congregation. Even though many churches and pastors have not gone through the process of writing a vision or a mission statement, they have intentions and stated or unstated goals for their congregations. I always like to say those goals, visions, and missions should be written down so they can be shared and breathed in by the congregation. However, if the church and pastor has no such written plan, the children's pastor will have an excellent opportunity to discuss the hopes and dreams of that senior pastor so that they can seek God with them to discern where God is leading the church. So if you are a pastor of children, perhaps your church has no written vision statement, but maybe God will use you to model vision casting in your church. If your pastor has not cast that vision for where they think God is taking the church, maybe you should ask them what are their top ministry priorities or goals for the church this year. When you have located that senior pastor's vision and goals, you can work to see how you have goals and how you can support his goals and vision and how your children's ministry activities may fit into the vision of that senior pastor. For example, if the vision of the church or pastor is to reach the community through outreach, such as meeting the physical needs of the community, it would be wise to discern how can children's ministry also have activities or specific ministries and events that contribute to the church's vision of meeting the physical needs of that community. Children's ministry must be committed to contributing to the pastor's vision and accomplishing God's vision for the entire congregation. The second thing in the top five things that senior pastors expect from children's pastors is a passion for teamwork. We talk a great deal about competition between churches, denominations, and Christian ministry in general. Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17 was a prayer for unity. He prayed that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. If children's leaders have a passion for teamwork, they are committed to making children's ministry and children's ministry staff a part of the greater church team and leaning on the greater church staff to participate with them in children's ministry. The success of children's ministry in a church is vital to the overall success of that church and the overall success of the church is vital to the success of children's ministry. A children's pastor and leader contributes to building team unity when they make opportunities to serve in children's ministry known to other church leaders. Also, children's ministers and pastors should make themselves available to work in other areas of the church unrelated to children's ministry. Understand that I'm not saying that we dilute our effectiveness by running ourselves too thin and doing more activities than we have time. However, we should be willing to serve in church ministries outside of our own ministries, and we should expect other leaders who work outside of children's ministry to volunteer in our ministries as well. Teamwork is biblical. There's a wonderful spiritual component in the ministry of serving and serving gives great example of great leadership. An additional area of teamwork that can be effective for children's ministry is cooperation between youth and children's pastors. How can you build a bridge between youth ministry and children's ministry, and how are those bridges vital to be built and maintained? I've witnessed leaders accomplish this bridge building with great excellence as children's and youth pastors work together their shared ministry activities and events, 
serve to bring a mutual cooperation and that lessens the shock that sometimes comes as children graduate from children's ministry into youth ministry. One of the worst things a senior pastor experiences is competition between departments. Lastly, it's important to spend adequate time praying for unity between ministries. This unity with God and each other is where Jesus said we would be effective in helping people believe that He was sent from the Father. The third thing I'll share with you that senior pastors expect from children's pastors is clear vision, mission, and goals for children's ministry. When we look at the importance of vision, mission, and goals, let me ask you a question. How excited would you be if you were asked to run a race that you knew had no finish line? The prophet Habakkuk proclaimed that we should write the vision and make it plain that those who read it may run. If you set clear vision, mission, and goals for children's ministry, you will find that children and parents will begin to run with that vision to where the Holy Spirit is leading. Senior pastors love it when their staff and leaders present a clear vision that is in response to the leading and direction of the Holy Spirit. A vision is what we see God doing through us in the future. Spend time seeking God and allow Him to show you what that vision is. Also, as I mentioned in the first expectation, it's important to discern how that vision for children's ministry complements and works with the senior pastor's overall vision for the entire congregation. Once you get your vision and mission, be willing to make it known. There's no need to make it complicated. If your vision is for children's ministry, it should be simple enough that the children of your ministry will know and understand the vision. As you share your vision, make sure to always keep the senior pastor abreast of any changes to that vision. I want to take just a moment here and take a step aside to look at one thing that isn't on the top five, but it's good advice. Always be careful to keep your pastor in the loop. It is the children's pastor's responsibility to inform the senior pastor of what's happening rather than placing that responsibility of the senior pastor to find out after it's finished. The senior pastor should be able to trust that they are aware and being made aware of what's taking place within children's ministry. Especially in children's ministry, unforeseen circumstances arise with children and parents of children. It's always wise to make sure the pastor knows about an incident before they read it on Facebook. Now, back to vision, mission, and goals. I've always made it a practice to ask my staff to present one, two, and four-year goals and update them on a regular basis. This is an excellent way to communicate to your senior pastor where God is directing your children's ministry. This gives the senior pastor an opportunity to participate through prayer and service where you are ministering. The fourth thing I'd like to tell you that senior pastors expect from children's pastors is spiritual and professional growth. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians that the church has been given certain ministries for the equipping of the saints and work of ministry. Pastors are one of those ministry functions. I always consider children's pastors a vital part of every pastoral team. Children's pastors, you are never second class and never less than any other part of the ministry staff. Perhaps it would be even better to call you pastors of children rather than just children's pastors. Now the Apostle Paul went on to say that those pastors are given to the body of Christ to build it up until we all reach the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. I always expect just as much from the children's pastor as I did from my associate pastor or any member of the staff. Children's pastors must be committed to spiritual growth. Always remember, you cannot give away what you do not have. God is calling you and me to give away what He is depositing into us. Pastoral ministry could be described as a process of filling and emptying. As pastors, our commitment to be continuously filled is critical to our spiritual growth. The spiritual value of children is diminished when we do not take our personal spiritual walk with Christ as the most important part of our lives. Yes, 
God is doing things through you and He desires to do even greater things through you. But never forget, what God is doing in you is always bigger than what God is doing through you. Finally, one more of the five things I want to share with you that senior pastors expect from children's pastors is a willingness and a desire to respond to the leading and working of the Holy Spirit in life and ministry. I believe that as the Holy Spirit is at work in the life of the church, we can respond to His leading by having a flexibility to work where He is working and a flexibility to move where the Spirit is leading. Inflexibility of leadership is like the kryptonite of pride for ministry. It is simply a tool the enemy uses to derail our ability to work where God is working. Children in your congregations are often the most vulnerable members of that congregation. They come to you bruised, broken, and hurting. No professional programs, plans, or any activity that we can produce will adequately meet their needs. But by the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, God can use you to be a vessel to speak faith, hope, and love into their lives. Let's seek God together that we can become responsive to the Holy Spirit in our lives and ministry. And let's pray for eyes to see how the Holy Spirit is moving in ministry to children. Every senior pastor desires to see spiritual growth in children's ministers. Children's pastors who work with a reliance upon the Holy Spirit for direction, planning, and execution of the service will see fruitful results as God brings healing and restoration to the least of these to whom we minister. And of course, that's to children. To conclude my part before Kathy comes for questions, I'd like to end with a prayer for all of you children's pastors and senior pastors who are watching. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would speak life and encouragement and healing into the life of every children's pastor and every pastor. Lord, this list that we have shared, I pray that you will empower us to drink this in and to receive this. Lord, I pray you would build unity and teamwork in every church represented in this webinar. God, we give to you our praise. We give to you the glory and the honor for all that you are doing, and we ask for even greater things and greater anointing in our life. We ask this in Jesus' name.